I have a series of channelings regarding the Saturnians for you um, with sound and without um, the usual type of pictures. I, there are a number of people who were involved in the channeling and uh, then the Saturnians also were involved. And the people that were involved in the channeling have, and I as well, have this sentiment with regard to it. It seems that it's information that has not been channeled before, or if it has, that the records of the channeling have been lost or been kept secret um, as mysteries of various faiths. Um, so we who, who channeled this information aren't sure how it ought to be held. We don't know the degree of veracity or purity of the channeling, uh, but we thought it best to to let people know about it anyway. Um, of course, it's quite possible that in the near or distant future, many um, more pure channelings may take place with regard to the Saturnians. Um, but here, for what it's worth, is what we have, what we've learned this night and this day recording the Saturnians. And we all hope that it will be of help in uplifting humankind. Um, God bless you all and keep you in love and light and joy and peace. Okay, so this is just quite a bit of intel here. It has to do with the Saturnians uh, and various people were channeling and listening to the answers uh, from the Saturnians. Um, so, and, and it goes like this. Jeez, I hope I can remember it all. We asked about their home world, Saturn, and uh, where they lived on it. And they said on a uh, under the rim, there's a rim, and just inside the rim on the side uh, in the direction of the planet is where they live. Um, I don't know if the ring spins around or not, but they say they stay in the same place relative to the, the planet on the underside of the rim. So... Uh, so that's what I know inside of the rim is where they like to live. And there's a humming sound that's constant. And they love that humming sound. They live by sound. They love sound. Um, I asked about a moon. I think there's a moon. Uh, a moon also of Saturn. And they said that it goes crossways across the... Um, across the ring every once in a while and when it does there's a noise that seems horrid to them uh, at the last time the noise happened uh, I think the words were all hell broke loose or something that reminds me of that term um, let's see various people were asking about whether they had days and nights there, and the answer they said was yes. Uh, the time is different, though. For instance, they quoted me a month. Uh, a month for gestation of a child, and then we asked if it was the same in our days and nights, and they said, no, it was a year for us. Then someone asked the manner of having children, and uh, they said that one one person, one Saturnian di divides, and um, and then the baby is like the baby becomes between the two halves. Um, they said first we get a simmering feeling. And then we get a catacomb feeling. 
and then we is when we divide. By uh, that catacomb feeling, uh, this is my intuitive notion about that. I think it may mean uh, that there's a feeling of something very dark, and within it, it a, a dark round space, and within it is something precious or sacred. Um, something that is bound for resurrection. Um, so the the darkness protects the the resurrecting being, uh, and the the natural physical uh, symbol of that I got to be like the California walnut tree, um, which has a walnut shell uh, that's first green and then dark, dark and then gets hard, and it surrounds a, 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 a hull, the walnut hull that protects the walnut meat, which, which is destined to become a new walnut tree. And so the being that was the uh, Saturnian uh, opens and divides into two, unlike the walnut, which is just one spherical thing. But this being becomes two, but the inside of the hull is is a round, dark space that protects the resurrecting being just as the walnut tree resurrects through the nut, uh, the walnut. Um, so, so the being itself that was may be um, pouring its resurrecting energy into the walnut, and the outside may be becoming less and less full of vital energy, don't you know, uh, as it becomes less and less important to protect that which is being born within. And then they said, ah, uh, there was a, a round baby in between, and this is the time, the, the year that happens. And then after that they said that after about a month, now I don't know if it's our month or their month, um, they started to have a state of disorder or disrepair, a disarray in themselves. And then they would get a feeling that others would carry on and uh, then they would go. I said, how often does this happen? And they said, only once in our lifetime. And uh, I said, how, how long uh, do you live after you have that child? And they said, that they passed soon thereafter. I said, well then, if it's only once in a lifetime, that must be difficult because um, you don't have any practice. How would you know what to do or what to expect? And they said that they, they chat around with each other and so they know what to do. Oh, one other thing they said. I said, how do, how do you communicate with us? And they said, it's a long distance kind of thing. There was some talk about cosmic rays. As you may know, the level of cosmic rays hitting Earth right now 
during this very deep solar minimum that we are experiencing uh, is, is really high. There are a lot of cosmic rays hitting Earth right now. And I was wondering if we're talking to the Saturnians right now because the atmosphere of Earth resembles more the atmosphere of Saturn uh, than it would during a solar maximum. In other words, the atmosphere is thinner here right now on Earth. And so it seems likely to me that the atmosphere, this is just guess, that the atmosphere of Saturn is gaseous, uh, but not but not so dense as Earth, that Saturn itself is not so dense as Earth, and that because of that lack of density that cosmic rays can penetrate to the very heart of Saturn, uh, more so than here on Earth. And if the Saturnians uh, were created for that environment, that would be the environment that they would love. And so... Uh, it may be that they feel more at home here on Earth uh, when the atmosphere is less dense as it is right now. And so that might be why we're talking to them right now. As far as Saturnians living within our energy field, uh, it seems to me that their beingness may be mostly ultraviolet in color and, and may have something to do with cosmic rays and so it may be through the cosmic rays that they intersect our energy field in the higher dimensions. Uh, I'm sorry I can't be more definite than that. This is just a theory. From the perspective of my own Claire uh, hearing and vision, it seems to me that we communicate with the Saturnians when, when there are more cosmic rays in our atmosphere as now, uh, like this. It feels like a cone of sound in ultra-high frequency, extending from the crown chakra, the seventh chakra, old style, up above the head, very high up, perhaps three feet up, and full of energies of ultrasound, uh, varying, like talking in beyond the range of human hearing. And in terms of the... Um, in terms of the clear, voyant faculty, it seems to me that this is shimmering with different, uh, different movements of of photons of of light, like wearing a starry crown shaped like that, shaped like a a high a very high hat. Even, you might say, like Merlin's wizard's hat, only instead of having stars and uh, new moons on a black background, it's, it's shimmering lights and sounds. Um, I was speaking with someone else, another human being, while the channeling was taking place with regard to how, how we might transfer or channel information sound by sound from the Saturnians to humankind um, because the, the main part of their message uh, may have to do with sound that's beyond the range of human hearing, ultrasound. Um, and I have a, a suggestion, 
and a theory about that based on an experience that happened in church today uh, while we were singing. I, uh, I had noticed uh, for a long time a jarring sensation when I attempted to sing in accompaniment to the hymns uh, as part of the congregation at the church, a feeling that, it, that the energy of my song was not flowing uh, optimally with the energy of the song in the, that filled the room. And uh, today I tried with the first hymn placing my awareness in the Hridaya uh, chakra, the deep inner sanctum of the heart, uh, which some people feel is in the absolute center of the heart chakra and which other people experience as a physical location in their physical hearts to the left of that. Um, and I asked my, uh, the baby angel in my heart, the self that's dwelling there, to find that spot and to sing from that spot the hymn. And the feeling that I got when she did that was that she, uh, the resonance in the room shifted the resonance of, of the energy, the sound energy in the room shifted, not in a way that could be discerned with the human ear, but to do with uh, ultra-high frequencies of sound that my angel was producing in the room. So this is about the, the singing in the church, and it goes like this. When the sound was created in that way, it felt to me as if the sounds in the church all became one, one sound. Some, in some way, they became united or harmonic, or harmonious, as if layers between had been added between the voices of each person so skillfully that it became like one voice of, of a song that sang itself rather than the song of many different people. So my suggestion is to use the same technique in order to, to bring the learning of the Saturnians into the realm of, of the human heart. I'm trying to think. It was such a long session. That's all I have for you right now. Y'all take care of you lots.